Tottenham are nearly at the end of Ange Postacoglu's first season at the club. And don't get me wrong, it's not a foregone conclusion if it's been a success. We're still fighting for Champions League football, but Ange Postacoglu has long-term ambitions for the club. So today, what I wanted to do was reflect on certain opinions that have been said on social media and YouTube about his appointment way back when and how some people have sort of u-turned on what they first thought about Ange Postacoglu's appointment, how Tottenham would be in the Premier League and also where we'd finish without Harry Kane. So today we're going to be answering the question how football fans changed their opinion on Tottenham Hotspur. So this all came about from a certain tweet that I saw in the last couple of days regarding some predictions and thoughts on how Tottenham would do under Ange Postacoglu. And then I thought, do you know what? I remember a lot of different and strange opinions, actually. Because, don't get me wrong, I want to say this first. When I heard about Ange Postacoglu becoming Tottenham manager... I put question marks over it. I didn't think it was going to, one, start as well as it has. And two, I was like, oh, is he the right guy? You know, after all those discussions about were we going to pick Nagelsmann? Was it going to be Enrique? You know, we went on a whirlwind. But in the end, you know, I've still been proven wrong. I was optimistic. I was excited about it. I bought into his philosophy and it started off very good. The season is on trajectory to be quite a good season if we, you know, get all of our aims. There's been a few negatives, the cup competitions, but, you know, that is what it is at this stage. But I still had us in quite, you know, I didn't think we were going to be as bad as some people said. And we know what some people said. I'm talking about the mid-table stuff. I'm talking about, you know, finishing ninth and below. So I never thought that. And I'll reflect on my pre-season predictions at the end of the season. I did a video on that way back at the beginning as well, but I will be watching that back to see what I said. But I remember the sort of position I predicted, and that was quite optimistic, and we seem to be out doing that already. But I've collated a few clips of how a lot of football fans, pundits, you know, creators, the lot, have, you know, gone from having one opinion on Tottenham to now probably going to the other extreme. And I'll say what the other extreme is after I show you some of these clips. <laughs> and then I've gone Tottenham. Yeah, I've gone Tottenham. I think Ange of... Postacoglu's shocking for You've me. gone eighth Tottenham. I've gone eighth Tottenham. Eighth. Yeah, and no, I agree with, with Roy. I think um, if Harry Kane leaves, I think the Bayern Munich interest is real. It's getting bigger day by day. If he leaves, they're screwed. Richarlison last season was absolutely woeful. Mm. I think if he's leading the line with Sun's form dipping again, if it, if it was to dip next season... They're in a world of pain. I can't wait. I've oh. seen their defence. But I also, yeah, they need to make a few signings. What's their back for? But these I days? do, I do think Spurs and their stadium will be a much happier place this season, just because the football is going to be better. Yes, but it doesn't. Harry the result style. come. The stadium's not popping if you lose in I say four seven, three. You score a lot of goals. Get Europa League, maybe. They're the kind of side that lose four three to Luton. You know, the, the, the other thing it's is, it's just an end to end game. Let's but they're also the kind of side that will beat City twice. Yeah, they do that, and that's their biggest achievement every season. But uh, I think they'll really, I think, I think Kane will go, and I think they'll really, really struggle. I wouldn't be surprised they're if back, Kane's still back there. Shocking. If Kane stays, then because Kane's still there at the moment, where do you think they finish? Because that's a big, big difference. I think they're, they're a worse squad without, uh, but behind Villa, Chelsea, Newcastle, I think they're far worse. Even than with matters. Kane, yeah, I think so. Yeah, no, I think you're yeah. being unfair on Postecoglou. I think well, you I, agree with no, it. No, I agree. I, I think I think that they've they haven't done the work that needed to be done in the transfer window. I think signing James Madison is is a good player, um, but I think they need so much more. I think in terms of the the positions that they needed to replenish, they they haven't prioritised the areas that they would that they were desperate to. And like Postecoglou, look, he could, he could come good. He could. <laughs> but what, what what are we basing that he will come good on? The fact that he won the league in Scotland. When I say come good, I just think took off straight to the World I Cup. Think, I think Spurs will just be a Stephen happier Gerard place. won the league in Scotland. No, no. I, I think modern football is a game about managers. I think, look at Frank De Zerbi, Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp, what he's done with a limited budget, Arteta. F modern football is about the manager's approach, the system, and if it if it bangs, you get Brighton in Europe. And... And Ange Postacoglu is not one that, of those managers. That, I, I, I'm still, I'm still sitting here today, and I'm shocked that Man United didn't buy him. I'm shocked. I think if Man United would have bought him, you'd have got a good four or five years of out, out of him, and Man United would have won the Premier League. Daniel Levy's not going to sell to United, though, is he? You got, you got no choice. He can't let him go for. No, surely they can't let him go for nothing next season. Surely, I mean, whoever you are in this day and age, I mean, I know there's a lot of money in the in the in the Premier League, but you can't be that mad to, you know. And th this team, Tottenham team. 
will they get in the top four next season? I'd be shocked. So it's not like you're keeping him and you'll go, right, we keep him, we'll definitely get in the top four. So whatever we lose by selling him, I'll make back in the Champions League. That ain't going to be the case. But they're going from a team that we think might get in the top four, might, to... Wouldn't even get in the top half if but, he leaves. But the other thing I is, even get in the top yeah, half. If 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 where Harry, they, where, where they get, <laughs> he's got 30 <laughs> goals last season. So hang on, Merch is saying if Harry Kane leaves, they're a bottom half team. Yeah, 100. percent Because who are they going to fill? Who are they going to fill? Come the on, Merch. They finished eighth last season. I wouldn't say they're going to finish. And he scored 30 goals. I wouldn't say they're going to finish. 30 league goals. I hear your point. It's got to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. But the problem is, is that was in an era pre the the amount of shocks in the tank now like mm. with Newcastle and Chelsea being hyper aggressive financially with uh, Arsenal now having a great side and then Man United Man City potentially if Liverpool can pull things together I just think when I'm looking at Spurs and you look at Brentford and, and, and teams Brighton. like Brighton, Brighton yeah. I yeah. just feel like it's a good bet to say Spurs drop next season into mid-table mediocrity. Definitely. I, I think they're about to mid-table. go through... Mid-table. Yeah. You're, you're about to go through... Doing a Chelsea, Chelsea, you know. Bro, yeah. if you yeah. take 22 goals out of your goals four yeah. in the league table, you bro, your mid-table be good. You're Crystal Palace. Yeah. Now, obviously, you'll replace them. The man has gone. He's been attacked. I personally feel like Spurs are destined for, like, a 10th place finish next season. I think Kane will go, and then it's just the end of their whole, like, we're a big club That's, kind of saga. Yeah. To replicate Harry Kane is, like... It's impossible. Yeah. Impossible. Impossible, yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe you don't have one Harry Kane, but maybe you can get, like, several good players. But they did try that with the bail money, didn't they? Yeah, and, and did awfully. Did awfully. Got on Soldado. And then right. your biggest player has officially gone now. And I think that's going to make it even more difficult. And I don't think Richarlison as a striker is enough to get you to the amount of goals that Kane gets you and saves you with. So I think, for that reason, I think it's mm -hmm. going to be very, very, very hard for you to Why is Nicole it? laughing at me? She's just <laughs> looking at my no, face laughing. No, I'm not, I'm not laughing. I feel, I feel sad for you. Right. You've lost your better? star man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. I mean, that's worse. I feel really <laughs> sorry for you, <laughs> Thank Smithy. You. I'm so no, much it must be hard yeah, yeah, yeah. losing <laughs> such a key player yeah, from your team. Yeah, still talking about this? Okay. When it's already <laughs> been quite bad. It's been horrible. Let's just have a moment for Smithy. I think, should, I think we should be a bit positive about Ange. I think, like, I think Ange is yeah. like, you know. Why are you? Yeah. <laughs> I think Joe? at least, at least, he's, <laughs> that's one thing. at least he's dealt with, and they can oh, progress. Yeah, yeah. I've actually really liked the way that Ange has conducted himself and how he's spoken so honestly, and also how he's trying to play football. He's changed the system. I, I think it, it's very easy to. to be negative about us now. I am really sad about Kane. <laughs> <laughs> and even on Sky Sports' his Monday Night Football prediction special, there was not one mention of Tottenham Hotspur in any of the top six predictions whatsoever, with the likes of Chelsea and Newcastle named above them. Ridiculous. So yeah, people were a bit way off the mark. You know, Harry Kane went to Bayern Munich and, you know, at this moment, question marks about whether he's going to win something. You know, the Bundesliga is out of touch. The Champions League, who knows about that? You know, it's going to be questionable. And also, they're out of the DFB Pokal as well. But we've gone on to do different stuff without Harry Kane. You know, we're sort of scoring different goals with different players and we're changing our philosophy. And Postacoglu was questioned, would he be good enough to step up to this league? Is the Scottish League even good at producing managers after having Steven Gerrard and people like that um, come out of there and win a league? So there was a lot of people who have sort of had their assumptions of where we're going to finish as well, like ninth, 10th, mid-table, Paul Merson. Absolutely on one when he was saying that. But now, a lot of people are going the other way with their opinions. And extreme, like, we're going to be fighting for the title next year. Which, I think is too optimistic. I think we could get there, but baby steps. We are, we're, we're in this process. So now, people are saying this sort of opinion. At this stage of the season now, with just seven games to go, do you start to, to talk more openly normally about the, the targets that you have in front of you? Yeah, well, he's, he seems to be agitated the last few weeks and obviously people have been asking about Champions League. He says, no, the bigger picture, we just want to keep winning football matches and take it in our stride. And that's fine. But when you think where they were at the start of the season, the Kane scenario, he's new to the club. He has done a brilliant job. He has done a brilliant job. The amount of games they've won, the amount the great chance, obviously, the Champions League, their style of football, the kind of the freedom he seems to be given the players and the way he's come across in the media. Uh, I think he's done a brilliant job. No, I'll just echo what Roy said. I think Roy's nailed it there. He's come in and he's changed the mentality of the club. They were, they were unwatchable. I've said it before, they're unwatchable for a few years, Tottenham. And he's come in, brightened the place up. They've made good signings. There's a, a real belief in the way that they play. 
He talks a lot about next season. I think if they bring some players in, they're going to be even better next year. They've got a nucleus of a really good young squad. You know, I talk about Van der Ven, who's you know, top quality. Madison's been a really good signing. Um, yeah, very impressed. Nothing but positive, positivity, really. And then for the, for, to get in the top four, which I think they're pretty much guaranteed Champions League football. I can't see Man United going on a run. It would be a capitulation from Tottenham if they don't get top four right now. Spurs are here to stay. And the change they've done in this short what, six, seven months? Yeah. Has put them ahead of United and many other teams. Now in their development. In their, absolutely. And, and you mentioned the graphic. I mean, you know, if you've got both of your full-backs, wing-backs, whatever you want to call them, who are by the penalty spot <laughs> when you're 2-1 up, that's why your, your defenders are scoring the goals that they are. And it's exciting to watch. And that's what Spurs' brand of football historically has always been about, scoring lots of goals and getting forward. And I think now with this manager, they will, they will attract a lot of players. Because even now, as we're ex-players, we're going, we want to play for someone like that. If you're a defender, you go, oh, I'll get a chance to score here. So I think they're going to be in a wonderful position if they can keep it. They've also, just quickly, they've got a massive say in the title because they've got mm -hmm. to play all the top three. This, a real team to this, win the big this, trophies. This Tottenham side now, if you look at that Tottenham side, you look at the players they've got, and you look at their bench, they're a twist of the wheel away from being a really, really yeah, significant not side. Of it. Actually, and you I, could argue and that. I think you'll see, right. if, if, Levy doesn't, if, if Daniel doesn't Where go... Did, we, could, we could do another three hours. And so a year ago right now, Arsenal did what they did. They fell off the pace. Yeah. Got to the end of the season and spent 200 odd million. Yeah. It took Cronky a long time to wake so, up, though, didn't it? So, Silent stand. So suddenly you're, realized it so was you're saying Tottenham spent 200 odd million this year if they finish fourth, that puts them into contenders. I think they'll get closer, not winners. Okay. No. Then you might say, no, they're not going to challenge. I think if he gets the players in who he feels can improve them and, and maybe add more depth into the squad then they, they do stand the chance. I think if it would have been very interesting this season had they have not lost the span of the team. Where would they have been at? Would they have had a drop? I mean, to be fair to them, they, they clung on for a long time. Um, I, I, I do think they can challenge. I really do. I think um, he might have to adapt a little bit the way he plays because when you say they're about the, the opportunities, the chances that they, they afford other teams, when you end up with both fullbacks playing in advanced positions in behind the strikers, opposition teams will be braver and they'll also what we call cheat, where they'll leave players in advanced positions high up the pitch and there's your out ball every single time. You do have to create opportunities off the back of that, but yeah, they can, they can certainly challenge. Uh, Spurs fixtures to come so we talk about the potential of those three teams going for the title one of them at least winning the lot mm. it does feel as though Tottenham are the kingmakers potentially in the title race as well as obviously having their own bid for the yeah. top four but there you go they could really play a big hand in deciding the Premier League title. Yeah, and when you look at it, you say, well, it's it's quite a difficult run for them that they've got to play Arsenal, Liverpool, Manchester City, amongst other teams that are obviously fighting for, for survival as well in there. But I think what we know is Tottenham will play exactly the same way no matter who they're playing against. They will cause teams problems. And, and I totally agree with Stephen. It'd be so interesting to see where they would be if they hadn't have had those injuries to, to key players in, in key positions because they are they're such an entertaining team to watch and, and to think that they're probably still a work in progress in terms of you know Postacoglu comes in you know the start of the season you, you lose your your centre forward and Harry Kane so many goals and yet they're producing these performances so quickly and they're in the position that they're in so quickly so you think uh, pre-season you know bringing in players like you say that, that maybe he wants to bring in next season where they could be and of course with any system there's going to be lots of positives which there is there, there will be negatives in terms of teams can play against them and, and find a way to, to get in and they're, they're sort of things that maybe you'll need to tweak but I think one thing that we all know no matter who's playing no matter who they're playing against they'll play the same way well I think it's a good tactic because you know he doesn't want to put added pressure on his team I also think that um, he's looking at, he must be looking at that running thinking hmm it's going to be tight you know your running's tough right yeah, big so, fun. you know, it's uh, it's not something that's going to be a given. So, you know, he's hedging his bets a little bit. But, you know, I think from the experience he's had, um, he's had one of, he's one of those managers who gets on the on the sort of run where they win, 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 win. He's, we're used to winning. And I think he's expecting uh, to take Tottenham into a position where uh, maybe Arsenal, Liverpool, Man City are next year, if he if he gets his uh, if he gets the recruitment right in the summer. So, in conclusion, with all of these takes. People have changed their opinion on Tottenham. I think Tottenham have become a more likeable team. I did a video the other day where I'm saying about 
issues that need to be ironed out. And people talk about mentality, which I think Anne just started. I'd say if this was like a loading screen on a game, where would we be? If 100% is the end goal and 0% was the start, I'd say we were still only at about 25%. And to say that is, you know, that sounds quite low, but, you know, it's still ticking around and we're still having to overcome a lot of things at Tottenham, you know. We still need a few more signings, you know. The squad needs to be improved. The mentality in certain games, you know, knowing when to, you know, do certain passes and play that perfect Ange ball system. I think this, you know, I think Ange has got stuff to learn about what players suit his style as well. So, yeah, I'm quite an optimistic Tottenham fan. You probably all realise this, but I know when to criticise certain things as well. Levy has to change. We know that. I think a lot of people were suggesting that with these new predictions. Tottenham can get to that next level, but they need to be backed. And I've said that many a time on my videos as well. So just thought this was an interesting video to bring up those points and just, you know, laugh at some of those opinions from early on in the season. So, but let me know. Do you think Tottenham Hotspur have changed? Do you think that, you know, what were your opinions at the beginning of the season? Were they so outlandish as this? Or are you now, you know, as optimistic as you ever was? I'm sure my Australian fans never doubted Ange. And I rate that from you guys. You know, you taught me the way of how Ange will play. And I've seen it. And I bloody do love it. So, yeah. And anyway, that is the video today. Hope you've enjoyed it. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, become a member, link in the description down below. And until the next one, I'll see you then. Ciao.